Shabbat Shalom, family. Thank Shabbat you for Shalom. tuning in again for another week of Shabbat in your home. We love you guys, and we're so thankful for you to join us this week and every week. And thank you so much for sending your testimonies of how Shabbat in your home has been blessing you yeah. and your family. That really encourages us to keep doing this because it is a labor of love. We enjoy doing it, but getting these boys and the whole family together and making sure dad's schedule and Shay's schedule are no conferences and no travels and it's a lot, but we love doing this. Yeah. We love doing it with you guys. So thank you for doing Shabbat with us. Yeah, we got so many testimonies actually this week alone of people who truly, you know, treat this <laughs> like they're doing Shabbat with their family. And actually just, just yesterday we were out at a coffee shop and a woman came up and recognized Shiloh from Shabbat in your home. So that was really cool too. So it's it's neat to, and I to see all the people. I saw Palmer. Yeah, whose lives um, <laughs> this touches. So we're really thankful to be doing this with you. And Keep sending them to encourage us. It's yes, for sure. Um, all right, well, let's usher in the presence of the Lord. I want to help you too. Okay, my love. Help me. Thank you. Milo, are you doing the blessing of the wine over here? I don't here? know what he's no. doing over here, but... I'm going to do that too. Okay, you ready? All right, here we go. Let's welcome the presence of the Lord. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam. Asher kidshanu b'mitzvotav v'tivanu lehad l'kner shel Shabbat. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, you are the King of the universe who has commanded us to kindle the Sabbath lights. Thank you so much, Yeshua, that you are the light of the world, and we welcome you into our homes tonight. Yes, All right, Shiloh, we got to grab her. Okay. Her cups. Hold on, Dad. Okay. Hold on, Dad. Okay, Lego sir. Lego first. All right, ready? Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam b'rei pri agaf. Blessed thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit from the vine. Thank you, Father, for the Son's blood that washes us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. L'chaim. L'chaim. Which means life. To life. Uh, Dito, you want some juice? Here. He's, he's got his baba, so. Okay, well, we'll just pretend. Let me take some of yours, babe. <clears throat> L'chaim. What do you think? Is that a good vintage? Oh, that's grape, actually a really good grape juice. Mm. Whoa, someone likes it. Okay. <laughs> you drank it all? Oh my goodness. <laughs> now somebody's right. bouncing off the walls with all that sugar. Can I? Yeah, it Did it help? Here we go. min Blessed thou, Lord our God, King of the universe. Bring forth the bread from the oh, earth. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for your son's body, Yeshua, that was broken. Pray for us. Yes. yes. And gives us Good healing and restoration. restoration. And this is the best medicine right here, right? It reminds mm -hmm. us of what Yeshua did for us. Mm -hmm. And everyone likes to eat chicken. Yes, and chicken and <laughs> okay. pala. Milo's ready to sing Shabbat Shalom, I think. Thank you. All right. Take it from back here. Take it from back here. Oh, yeah. Lots of raisins on this one, too. Someone digging in there. You digging in there for the best pieces, Shiloh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, Milo, you ready to sing Shabbat Shalom? Right, too. This cool. is just something that we do in our family. It's just a fun way to welcome the Sabbath. All right, let's go. Ready? All right, ready, Shiloh? Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Hey. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Yay, Dino! Yay, Shiloh! All right, you know what time it is now? What? It's time to enter into some worship. What's that? Some worship. Someone's gonna be dancing around with all the sugar he had. All right, Psalm 118 says, shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents right? of the righteous <laughs> of the Lord. Woohoo! Are we ready? You ready? Let's do this one together. <laughs> Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous of the Lord. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous of the Lord. 
The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand reigns on high. The Lord's right hand reigns on high. Once again, shouts and shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous of the Lord. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous of the Lord. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand, Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand reigns on high. The Lord's right hand reigns on high. Then it goes. Sing for joy in the Lord, you righteous ones. Sing for joy in the Lord, oh you righteous ones. Sing for joy in the Lord, you righteous ones. Sing for joy in the Lord, oh you righteous ones. Sing to him a new, new song. Let your heart rejoice in him. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name, his holy name. Oh, sing for joy in the Lord, you righteous one. Sing for joy in the Lord, oh, you righteous one. Sing for joy in the Lord, you righteous one. Sing for joy in the Lord, oh, Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. With shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous of the Lord. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous of the Lord. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand reigns on high. The Lord's right hand reigns on high. The Lord's right hand reigns on high. And then if we had a band, we'd go into... Roni, Roni, no, Bassio. Do you want to dance, Noe? <laughs> Roni, Roni, Batsio, Hadiu, Israel, Simchir Yatsi, Kolel, Bat Yerushalayim, which means rejoice, rejoice, daughter of Zion, shout aloud, Israel, sing rejoice with all your heart, O Jerusalem. Remember I said if we had a band, we'd do this? Yeah, we tried. We don't have a band, <laughs> okay, so and we're in a key that's a I lot higher. I thought they were going to help us and sing along, but you yeah. know, <laughs> I guess they're still I'm, learning I'm to I'm waiting talk. for JD to sing. Anabi. Oh, there we go. Are you going to sing? You want to sing? What are you singing? What are you going to sing? La, 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 la. Sing la, 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 la. La, la, la. <laughs> He's like, it was just a little taste. <laughs> <laughs> sing, son of my son. Oh, I think it's time to go sing. Ah, yes, how good. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and, and grandsons and nephews dwell together in unity. This is the blessing of walking with Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Love it. Good job, you guys. Uh, are you on union scale or was this a freebie? He's done. He's, He's done. He's going to start trying to stumble if we don't let him go down in that <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, so. the union guy said if he speaks, <laughs> it's going to cost me. Oh. That's enough for now. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> hey, family. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for Shabbat in your home. We still have more to come, but before we continue, I wanted to give you an opportunity to get involved and support all that we are doing. 
When you donate to Wilbur Ministries, you're not only helping us to produce these weekly Shabbat services, but your money is literally stretching around the world. From drilling freshwater wells in Africa to sending aid to the front lines of Israel, we continue to sow into our Jewish people in need. To donate, go to ShabbatInYourHome.com or send your gift to the address on the screen. Also, if you consider this your home congregation, feel free to send in your tithes and offerings to the address on the screen or go to ShabbatInYourHome.com. Shabbat Shalom. What a wonderful time that we're coming up to. Passover is probably one of my most favorite celebrations. I know I probably say that about all of them. I brought the elements out. We don't start until Monday evening, Erev Passover or Pesach in Hebrew. But I wanted to touch on some of these elements because I wanted to prepare you for this new season we're coming in. So Passover, biblically, is the new year. I know some of us might go, aw, I thought it was always January. So you can start your resolutions all over again if you've already messed up, which I think most usually do. It comes down to willpower, right? Anyway, I digress. So we're coming to a biblical new year. I love this season because it's a refreshing. It's going back to the beginning of all the celebrations there is a smaller one before that that we've already gone through, which is Purim. But this biblically is the large serenation, trumpet blasting, beginning of all the others that follow it. And it makes total sense once you read through the scripture and you see this beautiful story unfolding. And so how I wanted to begin all of this was, since we're coming to Passover, we have a very special surprise for you. A new Haggadah. <laughs> so we have been spending the last couple of years, I feel like doing many blueprints that really prepared what we are about to release now. I am so excited for you all to see it. It's been hand illustrated, meaning all of the graphics are done, drawn by hand. The layout is beautiful. We've uh, put in Hebrew and transliteration of the Hebrew. So if you don't read in the language, you can at least do it so in English if you want to try and work on that. So much thought, prayer, time, even passing it to other people. What do you think about this? Why are we doing our own Haggadah? There has been a way that we have seen this celebration through our own viewpoint. And what we really want to highlight is the person that we're celebrating who is Yeshua. He is the fulfillment of the celebration. He is the beginning. He's the end. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we look at the past celebration of Passover, what occurred there, then the one that he celebrated with his disciples, it just paints this beautiful picture. And we wanted to encapsulate all that into one booklet, really what we've put together and presented before you. So we'll have the links in the description. Please, please, please go pick one out. We also are going to make it available that you can uh, download it if you give us your email so that we can uh, share exciting news with you and reminders about Shabbat in your home. But I would encourage every household to buy at least one copy, have it in your home. You can also use a downsized version of the Passover for every Shabbat when we're doing the elements. And yes, we're also going to redo our Shabbat guide, but I digress on those elements because here we are, the table's been set. We also have a full Passover demonstration that you can do with your families. It's on YouTube. All of that is gonna be on a link in a description that you can go click, see the video that we've done, literally following us through a whole presentation with your family. You can buy the new Haggadah. You can have all of these pieces with your family and enjoy because it does go over seven nights. So you can enjoy this if you've somehow missed the first night because your family is busy and things are going on. It's okay. There's six other ones that you can participate with us. So what I really want to hone in on this celebration is going to be coming from Psalm chapter two. And you're probably thinking, well, what does that have to do? It's like in the middle 
of uh, the old covenant. So we're going to start in verse one. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrifying them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. So I would like to suggest, why are we seeing all of the chaos, the darkness and things going on in the world? Because there is a plot to try and attempt, I say try and attempt, to overtake Israel, but more specifically Jerusalem, because the nations have plotted a vain thing through the help of the leader of the dark forces or the dark side or the kingdom of darkness because they feel that if they can overtake Israel, Jerusalem specifically, somehow they can stop the return of our king, Yeshua. And man can say in his own thinking and high intelligence that we are the rulers of this world and we can decide for ourselves what is right and what is wrong. Doesn't that sound like a very common theme that started all the way back in the garden? We haven't gotten away from people saying, I can choose what's right, not the one who created me, but the one who created us loved us. And when that issue happened in the garden, because that's really what it was all about, Adam and Eve decided they could decide what was right and wrong and not the one who created them. That's the issue. Man and women's heart, this pride um, puffing up, which is why I love celebrating Passover because we enjoy... I say enjoy because I do, unleavened bread. And as we read in 1 Corinthians, this is a reminder of being devoid and removing sin far away from our lives. This is Yeshua's body demonstrated here on earth what was done during the Passover. And the Lord instructed you had to always use this bread when celebrating this holiday was a reminder so that when the one who it was about was here on the earth saying, I am the bread of life. He's speaking about this and how it even looks, how his body was, which was bruised, pierced, and without leaven, as Paul says, without sin. So we come to our verse in Psalms and we're seeing that the nations are raging. They're plotting this crazy idea that they are gonna overthrow the land of Israel by which somehow pushing away the one who's coming to reign and rule over the whole earth because we feel we can rule ourselves better than he can. Now, this also happened at Babel, right? The people thought they planned a vain thing. We can reach the high heavens. We can build our own elements and we will be like God. And then God had to come and confuse and create the different languages. And so there was a great dispersion. Again, you fast forward a little bit to when we get to the, the mountain where God gathered his people to come and worship him when they left Egypt. Joshua was gone a little while, and then they started planning a vain thing to do what? Worship idols, something not of God. And so you see this consistent theme all throughout scripture that people try to plan this vain idea that we can somehow supersede and go against his ways. But what does it say that the Lord is doing? He's laughing. Why? Because he set a timetable and he knows when he's going to answer the foolishness of man who thinks that we can somehow arise and become as great as him. Never going to happen. And so it says, then he will speak to them in his wrath. And we always hear in scripture that his voice is the sound of many waters, many thunderings. So I guarantee you that when this happens, and I feel like probably the great culmination is when we fast forward a little to Rosh Hashanah, right? Which is actually uh, Yom Teruah, the great sounding of the trumpet. A loud shout comes from heaven, the shofar blast. And uh, we're 
meeting Yeshua in the air, possibly during that time. There's this culmination where the celebrations, the holidays that God has set aside, those are his timetable that's saying, hey, look, I'm trying to get the world's attention. So I don't want you to be concerned when you're hearing things coming out in the news where it seems and appears, remember, planning a vain thing, that the world is coming to an end because it's been like that for thousands of years. Probably nothing's gonna ever change until it won't change until Yeshua comes to set up his throne in Zion and he is going to rule the nations once and for all. And the one element I really love about Psalms is they're also prophetic. King David is their representation, not in the fullness of who Yeshua was, but I'm saying the throne. Why? Because God made a covenant with David and he said, I will make this with you that from your bloodline will come the one who will save all Israel, but also what? All the nations. So that's what I love about our story. It started in the beginning. God was creating a people that would worship him, fell away. He had to restart with Abraham to reestablish covenant. And then um, we pushed the Lord aside, but he's always had the plan of bringing Yeshua for the salvation of Israel, but also for the nations. He's always been trying to get his family together. And those who are resistant and try to push back on his kingdom, those are the ones on the outside. And so when we come towards these celebrations, I'm telling you, it's going to get heightened even more. So when October 7th happened and we came to the end of Sukkot, which is supposed to be one of the most celebrated times of the year, it's almost like a marriage feast celebration. We've shared about that before. But you saw the kingdom of darkness come and attack within Israel but we shouldn't have been surprised because if we're watching the times and the seasons of the Lord, we know that he is establishing his way on the earth, right? And when that is hasn't come to its fullness with our king in Jerusalem, the kingdom of darkness is always trying to remove and push away all of these celebrations. And so I highly encourage you as we're coming to Passover, a biblical new year, Get the house cleaned out, establish your family, bring them together, pray. Lord, what is it that you want my family and I to establish in our household this year? I believe wholeheartedly that we're going to see the Lord moving in a great and powerful way in the earth. We're going to see it with our own eyes. And when we separate ourselves from the culture and from all the noise on the outside and we say, Father, this is your house we serve you and you alone. And we're gonna see what comes here towards the end of Psalm 2, where, where we read, Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with faith. Fear, and yes, that word does mean fear, like as in trembling. And rejoice with trembling. It even says it emphatically right there, rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. And so as we take refuge in Yeshua's sacrifice, these atoning elements Remember whose we belong to, who has purchased us with a price. We are protected because of what he's done for us. And when we take these elements every Shabbat, specifically also on Passover, let us ever remember. So I'm going to just pray over you real quick. Can you just grab your family around as we prepare? Lord, I just pray right now that by your spirit, that you would reach into every household right now. Father, I ask that you would reveal your will. Father, I ask for a provision for every household, Lord, that may be going through health difficulties or financial. Oh, Lord, maybe of broken relationships, Lord, of whatever is happening, Lord, as we take of the elements and we remember the sacrifices that Yeshua made for us, I'm asking that you would make a great exchange with us tonight. 
as we come into this biblical new year, Lord, may we do so rejoicing regardless of our circumstances, regardless of the things that are trying to pull us away from you, Lord. May we ever be more resolute that as for you and you alone, we will serve you and we will worship you, O Lord God, in spirit and in truth. And Lord, I thank you for everyone watching. I thank you that your spirit is moving on their behalf and I thank you, thank you, thank you for the atoning sacrifice that you made. We bless the Son. We bless you, Yeshua. And we worship you. And we thank you for all that you have done for our lives. And we will be that bright beacon that continues to stand for righteousness. Yivarechecha Adonai ve'yishmarecha. Ya'er Adonai panavilecha v'yichunecha. Isa Adonai panavilecha ve'asem lecha shalom. Bashem Yeshua sar shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace, shalom, everything that you need in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for Shabbat in your home. To get involved in all that we are doing here at Wilbur Ministries, go to ShabbatInYourHome.com.